It says circle the letter of the statement or statements that is or are true. All right. Solids are characterized by a great amount of movement of its atoms or molecules. Hmm. Well, actually solids are rigid. They're stiff. Okay. That indicates that the movement of the atoms or molecules is actually quite limited. All right. So that one's not true. The atoms of a solid are relatively stationary. Now that makes sense. All right. So we're going to circle this one. That one is true. Okay, how about C? When a liquid is heated, its molecules slow down until it boils. Well, no, they don't slow down when it's heated. They actually speed up. So that is not true. The attractive force between the molecules of a substance increases as it is heated. All right, so let's think about this. The attractive force between the molecules. Now, when we heat a substance, all right, that goes more toward the boiling where the attractive force is uh, not as strong, okay? So it actually weakens that attractive force because of the rapid motion of the molecules, all right? So the only one that's true here is B. All right, now we have a phase diagram here that for carbon dioxide. Um, that we'll use to answer the next few questions. All right, and um, let's see what the first one is. It says point D is called the, all right, so here's point D. That's the point where here we have the uh, solid and the liquid phase coming together as well as the uh, vapor phase, all right? That's why we call that the triple point. Okay. And point E is called the supercritical, or rather the critical point. Okay. A supercritical fluid is above the critical point. All right. That's the point where that line between liquid and solid, or rather liquid and vapor, disappears. Okay, and you just have a uh, an even transition in that supercritical region, right? So that is the critical point. All right. Number eleven. Under what conditions does carbon dioxide become a supercritical fluid? All right. So here's the critical point. The supercritical fluid is above uh, above this pressure, 73 atmospheres, and above this temperature, 304.25 degrees. So we could just say greater than 73 atmospheres and greater than 304.25 uh, this would actually be Kelvin, okay, taken straight from the uh, the graph, 73 atmospheres, okay. All right, question 12. As the temperature is increased, what is the transition across each line called? Okay, so A, B, C, those are the uh, three lines that are designated on the graph. All right, and we're wanting to know what is the uh, what is the transition across each line called as we're increasing the temperature. So if we increase the temperature, that means we're moving from left to right, and we're crossing each of these lines. We're crossing the line going from left to right. Okay, so let's start with A. In this region. Um, that's the uh, the solid where we're reducing the temperature, um, and uh, and we if we increase the pressure, we're forcing it down. That's um, where we're going to have the solid region, right? And then um, if we reduce the pressure um, to very low pressures, that's when we expect it to uh, give us the gas or vapor, all right? And then 
that region over here is the liquid. All right. So the transition from solid to gas is called sublimation. Okay. Again, this is just um, recall. Um, and then for line B, we're going from solid to liquid, so that is called melting. All right. Nothing fancy there. And likewise, line C, crossing it, moving in the direction of increasing temperature, liquid to gas, that is the um, boiling transition, if you will. Okay. So the transition going from solid to gas is called sublimation. The transition going from solid to liquid is called melting, and from liquid to gas is called boiling. Okay. And uh, those are the questions that deal with the phase diagram. Uh, question 13 says, a certain compound is made from two elements, A and B, where the A atoms are arranged in a face-centered cubic lattice, and the B atoms fill half of the tetrahedral holes. What is the formula for this compound? Okay, so um, we can uh, we can diagram this a little bit. It may help us to some extent. Um, so here's our uh, unit cell cube, all right, and this is a face-centered unit cell, so it'll look something uh, roughly like this, and then we have atoms in each of the corners as well, okay? So, um, of course, the drawing can't be trusted completely, but it looks roughly something like that, okay? Um, the main thing to recognize here is you have these ones in the eight corners, all right? There's four corners on top and four corners on the bottom, and each atom here, or each part of an atom is one-eighth of an atom. That's what's left inside the unit cell. So you have one-eighth of an atom times eight corners, all right? That gives us one atom. And then we have these faces. Each one of those is half, because it's split right in the middle. Half an atom. And we have those three plus the three uh, from the other three phase faces. So that's one half times six faces total, which gives us three. So um, the reason I'm doing this, of course, is we want to find the, uh, the formula. And we know that the formula within the unit cell is the formula of the compound once we reduce that down, okay? So we have a total of four um, atoms, and it was the A atoms that are face-centered cubic, all right? So there are four A atoms inside the unit cell. Now, how many B atoms are there? It says they fill half of the tetrahedral holes, okay? So this is where you need to know about the tetrahedral holes. Um, you can kind of see it here, this atom on the corner with that face, that face, and that face. Um, they, uh, uh, they will form, uh, there's a, a hole right behind this corner atom, okay? And that's a tetrahedral ho hole because between those four atoms, it forms a tetrahedron, okay? This would be easier to illustrate with a model, but that's something that you would just uh, remember, okay? Um, and so there's one behind each corner, which means there are eight tetrahedral holes within the unit cell. So if there are eight holes and they are half filled, that gives us 
four atoms of uh, B. Okay, so four A atoms, four B atoms. Our formula, you could say A four B four, um, but that would then reduce down to A B.